your boy DJ Silver Knight, Party Fanatic. We are at Wax and Facts, one of my uh, favorite places I've been shopping here since I started DJing. And uh, my guy Shell Rock is coming through. He'll go through some vinyl and talk about music and hip hop. And I don't think he's been in a record shop in a while. So, yeah, it's going down. The word inner is defined as situated inside or further in, mental or spiritual. The word view is the ability to see something or to be seen from a particular place or a particular way of considering or regarding something, an attitude or opinion. I got some really cool friends that's done and are doing some amazing things, and all of them have stories. Come kick it with me, Silver Knight, the party fanatic, as we go to some of my favorite spots with some of my good friends. This is Interviews. I'm over here with, looking at soundtracks. Silver. What's up, brother? Yeah. When's the last time you've been in a record shop, man? Man, I live in these, man. Yeah? And this is it, man. This is the, this is what I came in the game for, man. Yeah? You collect vinyl and, and yeah, man. This the only tracks thing, and cassettes still? Yeah, it's the only tangible thing, man. I'm not uh -huh. a fan of the invention from my man with the sweater there. <laughs> you know? I, I uh, applaud his brilliance, but I'm yeah. not into the MP3 thing, man. MP3s, this, this is it right here. This is it. Waveforms. Right no, I'm not into that, man. Let's go find some hip hop. What's your favorite type of uh, digs? Like, what do you, what do you like to grab? I like jazz fusion, man. Uh, yeah. I like some of the old uh, Ramsey Lewis, Diodato, and some Bob James, who could never do wrong. Mm. Even some of the um, motion picture, picture stuff, but mm -hmm. not just urban motion motion pictures, but you know, all of it. Man. You know, I mean, I'm a fan of the Willie Hutch stuff and mm -hmm. and all of that, but Marlon Brando got some great stuff, and obviously Quincy Jones got great stuff. And oh yeah, Ennio Morricone got some great stuff. What what's your uh, what's your what's your your holy grail that you haven't found yet that you're looking for? In vinyl, say a vinyl uh, a vinyl record. Um, it's probably stuff that are that are on 45, really. Okay. Um, Anything in particular? Yeah, definitely some Miles Davis stuff that I haven't been able to find. Uh -huh. uh, Bitches Brood had a, a different yep. version on uh -huh. it, and I never found it. Um, Idris Muhammad stuff. Mm -hmm. and it makes it more important to find Idris Muhammad because I finally was able to meet his son. His son is a chef. <laughs> so any of the early CTI stuff, you know, all that Creed Taylor stuff, man, I mean, I, I love that stuff, man. Sometimes I would touch it mm -hmm. in a sample form and just never do nothing to it. I just wanted to be part of Manipulating it in some way, you know. So, some of these names are here that you see that you know off rip. Nas joint. One of Nas's first records is with me. Uh huh. Uh -huh. You know, me and Search. <laughs> What's the name of the song? Kick him in the grill. It's really on the third base uh, dialects of Dur Derelict of Dialect album. Yep. So it's on their album, but um, he kind of started with us. We know yeah. these guys. Yeah, it's our brothers, man. Nice, nice and, and smooth. smooth. Yeah. Yeah, with awesome too. Yeah, all of it, man. <laughs> smooth B, glorious. This is when you had to put, a, is put a, a lot into making it, because now, like you say, it goes straight to an MP3. They're not doing photo shoots and None of that, artwork and something tangible you can hold. Like, you see this album with Biggie. Yeah. You know, when you just, you, you hold this, man, mm -hmm. you just feel like you're part of something, mm -hmm. man. You know, you're part of his work ethic and yeah. Easy Mo B and yeah. just incredible songs, man. I mean, Some man, good ones in here, man, incredible man. stuff, man. Everything here is, is incredible, man. What do you know about what do you know about that? Yeah, man. That was um that's the first album, man. First album. Your whole life as a musician is based on your first album. Tell me about this artwork on the back, man. Lady that worked at the la label called Amy Bennick. She had this artist, man. I think his name was Andrew. And he just said, Hey man, Chubb is so funny in this, I would like to make some kind of cartoon thing yeah. for him and for the album and he listened to the album and he came up with his own interpretations of all the songs. And you, got, you got your shirt off in one of these, man. What's yeah, because I was sexy back then, man. I was, <laughs> you know, women were loving me back then. Man. But, uh, yeah, man, you know, it was just like, I just always felt like you could have some levity in music, man. Yeah. Most of the stuff was comedy. So it it could have yeah. been a comedy album, actually. Yeah. But um, it was hip-hop, man. It was a great album produced by Hitman Howie T. And um, we had just a great time doing that. Because we did the album at home. Mm -hmm. We never mm -hmm. went to a studio to do this album. Everything was mixed at home on a Tascam 388. Wow. Um, I, and I bet you get that at home, don't you? You got, got it at home. Because you, you like to collect old uh, beat machines and production equipment. All of it, eight, man. eight tracks, everything. I'm a hoarder, man. I don't get rid of nothing, man. Because I always wanted to do an album with some hip-hop cats 
on the original equipment. Mm-hmm. No, no Pro mm-hmm. Tools, no mm-hmm. automation. How it used to be. How punching in and out. Man. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I always wanted to keep the old stuff, man. I, I, you know, I know Howie and all them think I'm crazy, man, but that's how I see it, man. You know, I think that all the new technology is great. Yeah. But it's not what hip hop was part of. Hip hop was a a grungy. Mm-hmm kind of thing like how the rock and roll dudes used to do their stuff in a garage right and um so the rock and roll dudes had the garage and we had our basement most likely your mama basement right right you know everything was in mom's basement so yeah let's stomp through some more man let's see what else is in here what's this right here what you know about that yeah man um that record really set it off for me man first choice south soul Mm -hmm. uh records and this is where we got the hook for Treat Them Right. Right. And the people that own South Soul Records, the Carey Brothers, um, and particularly Ken Carey, Mm -hmm. this was, oh man, was so kind to me, man. They were just great people, man. They were perfect people. They were overly successful, man. I Mm -hmm. forgot what it was, but I think they hold the patents to bras. Wow. And they would do all these also religious cartoons, and they did a bunch of the um, Richard Simmons... Mm-hmm. Um, DVDs, I mean, really, really successful men, man. But their love was music, man. Yeah. yeah. And he owned Sal Soul, and he allowed us, he allowed me to go through his catalog and was like, yo, make a song out of anything you want. And he wow. just was super kind to me, man. I, I mean, it was just, it was a great time. Walk man. me through recording it. The first time in the studio, the beats laid, you're going through laying the vocals, you, you, you wrote the song. Walk me through the feeling of recording and what was going through uh, your mind then. You know, it really how it really started, man. I had some shows in England. Mm-hmm. And I, I think I had like seven shows in England and like five of them got canceled because of a, a serious storm mm-hmm. out there. And um, so everybody went back. We did like two shows one night and then everybody went back. And I was like, man, this is my first time in England. I ain't going back. So I just... The, the promoter and his wife were so kind to me. They were like, we're so sorry about these shows and the weather. Stay at our house. Mm-hmm. And I stayed there for literally about five weeks because all he did was take me to various old record stores. And mm-hmm. I went to this r- record store called uh, The Time Is Right record store. It was 11 Chapel Market. I'll never forget it. And I found this record, the first choice record. Mm-hmm. I found... The James Brown produced the Felice Trio record that yep. has the, the the groove of yep. Treat 'Em Right yep. and the guitars and a bunch of other records, and then I went home, and we were just fin- we had already put out the Your Bad Chubbs album. It was mm-hmm. time to do the new album, mm-hmm. so I went over to Howie's. I said, "Hey man, I got a bag of stuff that's gonna blow your mind," and he was like, "Yeah," and I was I kept playing it for him. He was just like, "Let's let's start cooking," right, right. and. We just started cooking from there, man. It was um, great stuff. You know, it's funny thing about Treat Em Right. When we were mixing the record in the basement, mm-hmm. Dougie Fresh was there. Okay. He was sitting. He was sitting on the couch. So every time we would play the beat with the vocals on it, he just jump up. <laughs> you know how Doug does. <laughs> and he was just like he's going. He's just dancing to it. I'm like, right. okay. That's, think, a good, that's a good sign. Yeah, I think Doug likes this record. If Dougie's doing the Dougie, that's a good sign. Yeah, you know that it's a good record because he just feels it, man. Right. And um, and we just mixed the whole album in about two days, right in the basement, my aunt's basement. Mm-hmm. And um, it just felt great, man. The response was crazy when they dropped. No. Was it was it through the roof immediately or did it no. take some time? We couldn't get arrested with Treat Em Right, man. Wow. Almost for like a year. We just couldn't get arrested. Put it out, mm-hmm. nothing. And the you label was, you was doing shows. You you were promoting it. You n- were doing everything you could. No, we wasn't really doing a lot of shows, okay. man. We was just like, why is it this taking off? And and it was crazy because it was a a, a, a lovely lady plus uh, the vice president of select, um, mm-hmm. uh, Wyatt Cheeks, and they said we got to find a way to get this going, man. And somehow they got it into uh, KMEL. Mm-hmm. out there in San Francisco and they have their big summer jam out there right and we went to perform there and we performed at the KMEL and the record took off from there like right. I don't know exactly what happened but it went from there to Virginia 
So it was really the eight, it was KMEL mm -hmm. and all the HBCUs in Virginia, um, Hampton and all of that. Uh, man, they just, I was performing in Virginia every weekend. Wow. And then it went into Howard. And, and then it really just went to the HBCUs mm -hmm. across the country, country, Grambling. And I mean, that's what really built uh, Treat Em Right was, was HBCU, yeah. Yeah. HBCUs, wow. man. And then um, my brothers, man, Hot Dog and Dinky and Doc mm -hmm. No, and they, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Omega affiliation and dancing in the video. And then we put the Kappas in the video because mm -hmm. my cousin was a Kappa. And then we put Sigma is in there. And my cousin was a Sigma. So once we had that whole collegiate feel in it, that's what really took that record to a new level. And, and, and that album scorned. I mean, uh, produced four number one records. Wow. And wow. it was all because of HBCUs, um, the fraternities, sororities, but the vibe of college is what made mm -hmm. that record. And it, and even now in the old school time, that's what we still do. Mm -hmm. Alumni shows and homecomings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of that kind of we stuff. We did an uh, alumni show together. And we did it together. Right. So yeah. everything that's was, right. it was college, man. That, and, 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 and the kindness of people. Um, and then Arsenio Hall asked us mm -hmm. to, to do his show, and then we did it four times. He became a good friend, and he was into, he just was into that vibe, man. He went to Kent State, mm -hmm. so he was a college guy, and it, it was just, it was nice, man. Great time. Did you think Treat Him Right single was going to be the one, the breakout song? Was there some another song that you would have picked? From the album? Yeah. I really was more of a fan of just the two of us okay which still did, was was the number one yeah, record too yeah. but that was my if if i had to put it in order i thought it was going to be just the two of us i thought it was going to be the one mm -hmm. and then treat them right okay obviously okay. totally wrong about that Treat right was out of here it's, it's still out of here yeah i mean it's just a, a serious record man it's in the most of these soundtracks mm -hmm. You know, um, you can't you can't do a show now, and if you don't do treat them right, they fighting you. Yeah, you get killed. You, you get killed out there. You get killed out there. But you know, it, it, it's a blessing, man, because you really work your whole life as a musician if you can to make one classic record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, because you can have hits, right? But I'm talking about classic records. Some that, that transcends through generations. It keeps Period. Going. It just yeah. keeps going. Yeah. It takes two. Rob Bass is going to be that, you know. Forever. OPP yeah. is going to be that, forever. you know. Right. These are records right. that are just forever. Yeah. I don't care if you're white, black, mm -hmm. tall, mm -hmm. short, Republican, Democrat. It don't make Everybody. a difference. Everybody. I got something for you, man. You tell me, uh, this, this is this is for you. You know, oh. you know what this is? <laughs> yeah, the, the cassette for the one. The one. You know, you had a cassette player in your car still? Oh, always. <laughs> always, always. <laughs> tell yeah. me, I actually... Took this picture and put my my face on it one time and yeah, photoshopped yeah, 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 it. Yeah, photoshop it. <laughs> Tell yeah. me about this, man. Well, I mean, the, the photo shoot. I'm looking at your swag here, man. You. It was you terrible. Swag. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> what do you have because, on a blue jean leather you, jacket? What's what yeah, is that? Because what it is is this. <laughs> I'm technically a bum. Okay. Biggie was into the clothes. Heavy was into the clothes. These are my brothers here. Yeah, yeah. But they knew me. They knew like, yo, Chubb does not like to get dolled up uh -huh, like that. Uh -huh. You know, they had the smooth joints. And, right, they had the cool, coogee sweaters. And my mom, man, I mean, oh, man, rest in peace, my beautiful mom, mm -hmm. man. She was like, boy. See, this one, they didn't have to take no photo shoot. Right, they, they drew that on. Yeah. And here's like, she was like, you got to. Who picked this out? You gotta, so she actually you, made that suit. Your your mom made this. Yeah. Wow. Look at this. Yeah. She made that. See, this is more me, bum stop. Right, right, right. You get the, is that a silk shirt? Please, silk? I can't even spell silk. <laughs> and this is the crew, you know, my brother Rob Swinger yep. and the, the, the Omegas. And yep. this is Trackmasters. Uh, wow. Tone and Tone Polk. Uh, wow. One of my closest friends, Kirk Pone, that we grew up together. And, wow. Yeah, so, you know, we, we um, it was a good, good time, man. You know, good time. In fact, I think Mona Scott might be in it. Because Mona Scott was the... Was was a a dancer mm -hmm. in just the two of us video, Mona Scott. Name? I mean, she's loving hip hop and she's mm -hmm. brilliant and mm -hmm. beautiful and um and she was a dancer at first and wow. she um like you know real dancing just like she was really 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 talented and um so we, we've been blessed man to be around some good people man mm -hmm. and searches on the album mm -hmm. and Lady of Rage her first our first rhyme is on this album really Lady of Rage. 
Wow. And then she went to the, with Dre and them yep. to do the yeah. um the whole Afro, Afro Puff yep. stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But she that, started that's a on major there. Song too. Yeah. So it was it, it was a good time, man. I mean, you know, music and hip hop was very much alive, man. Yeah. And that's what I want for these young guys, man. You think it's different now? Well, you know, I think when you have an MP3, you don't have a tangible thing to grab and mm -hmm. put on your wall mm -hmm. and having a thing and people can want to collect it. Right. right. So your brilliance um, doesn't get a chance to really be honored in that way. Because right. it's just like, I can email you the song or right. whatever. And These stores won't exist in the MP3. Yeah, you know, and, and this is what it is. this is what it's all about, man. You know, so when you go to real musicians of the world, you know, and 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 Ahmad Jamal and all these kinds of brilliant people, this is how they this is their legacy. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. this is their legacy, man. And I'm glad that for hip hop, we we are part of that legacy. The youngins now they have the opportunity if they can to put their stuff on vinyl now because. Right. Right. Ain't this Gambino's yeah. record? Great, great mm -hmm. cover, and it's what, and then you can collect it, you know, and that's a great title, Digging. Yeah, Digging, Digging. You know, this scissor. This, scissor. this is pretty new. Which, which makes sense with her, mm -hmm. because she has such an old soul of beautiful music and voice, and she, she almost seems like a young lady that was from the '80s. She does. You know, yeah. and which is why I think that she's gonna definitely redefine. R and B and music, man. I just kind of love, yeah. you know, her style, and so it makes sense that she's on vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, it, it's, you know, I just love this era, man. I mean, this is how my house looks, and <laughs> I love it, man. It's like, and this is how people that love this stuff, how, how their homes look, man. Right, you right. Know, they, right. They've dedicated square footage oh, for yeah. this stuff, man. Oh yeah, rooms or basements full, without question. So we go from all these hits being out, mm -hmm. hip hop, yeah, man. great artists, and now you're in radio. How did you uh, get into radio? And radio was by accident. Mm -hmm. You know, Ed Lover, Dr. Dre, and Lisa G, they did the mornings on a brand new radio station in New York called Power 105. Mm -hmm. And they were looking for someone to do afternoons. Mm -hmm. And um, Lisa G, I have no idea why. Um, she just recommended me. I don't think she knew whether or not I had any ambitions of doing radio, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if I would be good at it. Or, uh, she just, for some reason, just said, I think he would be the one for it. And the uh, program director there, um, Michael Saunders, was a pretty forward-thinking um, guy, because, mm -hmm. I mean, it has it got to be a risk right. to take a chance on someone who's never done never it. Never done it, right. And he... Um, Again, I have no idea why, man, but he said, I will teach you if you want to learn this. And I was like, man, of course, man. I want to be able to use my voice for other things, you know, because mm -hmm. music was always something I did for fun. I never thought of it as a career thing. And um, But using my voice for things like cartoons or whatever, that's what always been my dream, you know? Mm -hmm. So reggae, I mean, uh, radio would have been a good start. So he, he brought me on on the weekends, it was teaching me. And then when Ed, Ed Lover and uh, Dr. Dre and Lisa G went on vacation, mm -hmm. um, he had me fill in. So I did their morning show the for about Which a week. Which is a big slot. Mornings, big slot. mornings are major. And it was just me and D.L. Swift. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And we did it, and he loved how we did it. And he came to me one day, just walked in and said, uh, Monday, I want you to start afternoons. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm just going to fill in for a little while. Um, I said, oh, I, I want you to, I want you to do that. And uh, two and a half years later, um, I then went to WBLS, mm -hmm. um, iconic station in New York, um, the home of the Quiet Storm, the birth of the Quiet Storm, which was, um, as a kid, that's what you grew up, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and you know, from there, uh, I had an opportunity to. What I noticed that. Classic hip hop wasn't on radio anymore, okay. and it bothered me. And I'm like, why is it? You know, you're playing Luther, you're playing Anita Baker, you're playing these records. Why can't you play hip? You know, hip hop from the '80s, '90s. It, it, it didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. So I went to uh, Skip Dillard at, at WBLS, and and um, I wanted to do an, uh, a weekend show, and 
And then I came up with a weekend show that I wanted to syndicate, and Eric Faison um, helped me do it independently. So it was a serious grind, mm -hmm. one station mm -hmm. at a time. And, um, yeah. and Getting them to agree to put it on. Yeah, and because and, and it was something show. totally different. Right. So every right. program director right. that took it on was like a dynamic person because right. it was right. totally not what they were doing. Right. Right. And Derek Harper was the third station to take it. Right. Yeah. And in Atlanta, and uh, he just was such a big fan mm -hmm. of it. He put us in an, an incredible time slot, and and for a New York guy to come to the South, and mm -hmm. and it just resonated and it worked, and because we didn't believe in divisions, we just believed in music. Right, right. What you, what you call it? Uh, digging in the crates. It was it was it was really called still digging, mm -hmm. but it ended up because people said, "Oh, digging in the crates," because there's a legendary crew. Yep that I'm a fan of, that are brothers of mine in New York called the Digging in the Crates Crew. Okay. And they're rappers and producers. And um, so when I said still digging, people oh, yeah. just, oh, you mean Digging in the Crates? Because it was such, it's a legendary term. Right. But right. those guys made it really legendary. Yeah. Um, and big shout out to the DITC crew in New York. And um, and we just wanted to keep that vinyl thing going, man. And, yeah. and then as it was building Derek and Cyman Baby, mm -hmm. Like Simon, baby. Iconic. I said, man, would you come and do this afternoon thing with us, man? And mm -hmm. and uh, we've been on the afternoons um, almost six years now. Six years will be in September. And, wow. And Diggin has been on uh, seven years, seven and a half years, and, and we're how many, at 50 how many stations. 50 stations now. Yeah. And 50. you have another one, uh, another Authentic Caribbean show. The Authentic yeah. Caribbean, because uh -huh. I felt how like. How many markets is that in? 17. Wow. Because we felt wow. like. Even this narrative is not where it should be anymore, mm -hmm. you know, because back in the 90s, you can play a Mary J. Blige record, you can play a Naughty by Nature record, mm -hmm. you can play a Luther Vandross record, and right after that, you can play Shabba Ranks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can play Super Cat. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, now you don't hear it on regular radio. It's like going underground again, and I do right. not understand that. Right. Right. So this is, this is music. This is international music. This is loved by everyone. And... So my plan is to try to really bring this back into the forefront of the conversation of music. And there and, it is. And that's what we do, man. It's Chub sure Rock, y'all. That's, that's, that's oh, yeah. treat them right, right there. Just, just the two of us, right there. Big shout to all the souls that helped me. That's it's digging in the crates, right there. Authentic Caribbean, right there. Or is it Caribbean? The authentic Caribbean. <laughs> Full crew, man. This is the first person I met coming to Atlanta who was kind to me and showing me around and, you know, making sure I knew where I was going and not getting lost. Yeah, so I, yeah. I'm a big fan. And he beats me up every day. Yeah, every day he every sees day, me. Every he day. abuses me. Because he's Great a, friend. He's a brilliant guy. So I got to always beat up the brilliant guys <laughs> to let them know that they're brilliant. Appreciate you.